Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my top starts of the week for week 17 of the 2022 fantasy football season. It is championship week. So I'm hoping we can make some good calls in this video. But before we get into that, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. With that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, so we're gonna start with the quarterback position. We're gonna begin with Jared Goff, quarterback of the Detroit Lions as my first start of the week at the quarterback position. So the Lions offense and Jared Goff at home this season especially are just money. And in Week 17, they get the Chicago Bears. They do not have a great defense. They've been giving up points to the quarterbacks. Um, if you look at what Jared Goff has done over the course of the season, like I said, he's been really good at home. But the last few weeks, Weeks 13 and 14, both home games against Jacksonville and my Minnesota Vikings, he was the quarterback for each of those weeks, both of those weeks, according to Fantasy Pros scoring, whatever format they use. Uh, the next week on the road against the Jets, that was a tough matchup. I would not have recommended starting him. He was the quarterback 17. Next week, granted, it was on the road and not a home game, but still, he was the quarterback two on the week. So he's actually been pretty hot lately. Now in week 17, it's a home game, like I said. It's a high over-under. The Bears defense is not good. Um, and I expect him to win people some fantasy championships as a streaming option. He's got good weapons, uh, mainly Amon Ross St. Brown. But last week, we even saw Shane Zilstra, of all people, with a hat trick with three touchdowns. So he's finding a way to get it done. Uh, and I think this game is going to be high scoring. Not a lot of defense being played. So I think Jared Goff is a very, very good. I mean, I, I call him a streaming option, but I mean, I would play him over a lot of regular starters this week. So play him with confidence. Next up in that same game on the other side of the field, we got Justin Fields. I didn't mean to say field twice there, but uh, Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears. He is my second and final quarterback start of the week. I just want to bring him up because he has been hot lately. Week 16, he had an off game. I know uh, I played him in my semifinals and he Really had an awful game. Didn't even score 10 fantasy points. Luckily, that wasn't the reason that I lost. I lost by a lot in that round. But uh, it was weird to see him not really use his legs. So monitor the news to make sure he's not dealing with any sort of injury. But um, he's, he's kind of been on the injury report a decent amount lately. Uh, but I still think he is a great, great play in Week 17. I'm expecting a bounce-back performance against the Detroit Lions. Like I said, I think uh, the Lions are going to put up points. The Bears are going to have to keep up, and it's a high over-under. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game and not a lot of defense. And every player has a bad game, uh, especially a young player on uh, not a great team like Justin Fields. Um, but if you look at what he's done you know, over the course of the season since week six, uh, this was the first game that he hasn't been a quarterback one. So I'm, I'm fully expecting a bounce-back game. Week 17, and I think he might just win you a championship. All right, now we're going to move on to running back. I'm going to start with James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals. I'm just going to bring him up. If he's on your team, you're probably starting him anyways, but he had a rough start to the season. You can see his game log right here. Uh, but lately, he has been utilized a ton for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, you look at what he's done in half PPR the last you know handful of weeks, running back 20, 5, 14, 6, 5, 12, 5. Uh, consistently in double digits, putting up 20-plus point performances regularly. In Week 17, he gets the Atlanta Falcons. I expect him to be heavily utilized in this game. Um, he's on the field a ton. He's using the passing game, so especially in PPR formats, he's going to be awesome. I would not be shocked to see him score a touchdown. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the, Cardinal, the Cardinals are dealing with some quarterback injuries right now, so... You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cardinals as a team don't score a ton of points. Uh, so maybe even if James Conner isn't able to get those goal line opportunities, he's still going to see a ton of work between the 20s and in the passing game where I think he is at least a safe play. And with how hot he's been, you got to keep him rolling, especially in a good matchup against the Atlanta. Next up, we got Travis Etienne. And I know it has been very, very rough lately. And if you have elite options that you would rather start over ATN. I don't blame you for going with those guys in your championship game, but I am expecting a bounce back performance for Travis ETN in week 17 against the Texans. Um, first of all, the Houston Texans are a great matchup for fantasy running backs and ETN has had a number of tough matchups. If you look like since their bye week, he's had kind of a gauntlet with some tough run defenses, some teams that have turned it around in the rushing defense department. So in week 17, I'm expecting him to see, you know, 15 to 20 plus carries. Uh, hopefully he sees a few targets. I don't know why they don't use him more in the passing game, but 
you know, if he gets a few targets and catches them, that's just a bonus. But this is all about the matchup against the Houston Texans. Um, yeah, I just want to exploit that matchup. So I think that Travis Etienne, I'm expecting a bounce back game. He's had an up and down season, but I think we're, he's going to end the fantasy season on an up, on a high against the Houston. Next up, I'm going to go with Cam Akers. Um, speaking of up and down seasons, he's been mostly down. You know, coming off the Achilles injury, uh, there was a little bit of drama. I believe he requested a trade at one point. Uh, it looked like they were trying to kind of phase him out of the offense. But lately, particularly since week 13, uh, he's been very involved and very good for fantasy. Uh, he was the running back seven and uh, top 24 running back technically the next two weeks, running back 23 each of those weeks. And then he was the running back one last week against the Denver Broncos. I'm not saying I'm expecting that type of level of performance in week 17. Uh, he had three touchdowns in week 16, and he was on the bench in one of my leagues, so that's kind of annoying. Granted, it was a league I'm in a consolation bracket, but still, it's like, why all of a sudden is Cam Akers the running back one against the Denver Broncos' tough defense? I think that defense kind of gave up at this point. But anyways, I digress. Um, week 17, it's an easier matchup against the Chargers. Uh, their defense is getting better. I want to say that they have, they're have they getting some players back from injury. Their team is kind of coming into form, but still, Cam Akers is seeing enough volume and goal line opportunities, and just, you know, it's tough right now. You're probably dealing with injuries out there. I, it seems like most teams are dealing with injuries where Cam Akers might be useful for you. I'm not saying he's a must-start by any means, but if you're in a pinch, I think he's a nice, solid running back to play, and if he can get in the end zone, uh, he might put up a big performance. All right, we have a few running backs to talk about in this video. I know I only had two quarterbacks, but there's a lot of running back plays that really stood out to me that I wanted to talk about. So I have another one here, Brian Robinson Jr., the Washington Commanders. Uh, you can kind of look at what he's done lately at his game log, regularly seeing, you know, 15 to 20 plus carries, not really using the passing game a ton, but uh, fellow running back Antonio Gibson uh, for Washington is out. He was ruled out for week 17. So this backfield, obviously, the, you know, someone else will step in and get some touches, be on the field a little bit. But Brian Robinson, his volume is that much more secure. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe that translates to maybe some targets, maybe like one or two more. We'll see what happens. Maybe they just don't want to use him in that role. Um, but in week 17, it's a good matchup against the Cleveland Browns. Um, he's He's had his moments this year. He's very reliant on the ground game, which especially if you're in a PPR format, it's kind of annoying when he's not getting those touches through the air. But, you know, since week 10, let's just say, you know, 14.6 points, then 5.7, but, you know, 19.5, 12.1, by week 11.2, 5.8, and a tough matchup against San Fran. So, you know, he's not like this must-start auto-locked-in guy, but you're probably dealing with injuries. Maybe you have Derrick Henry. Um, it's someone to play at running back. I think just with the volume that he's already getting, uh, the volume that should be even more secure and maybe increased with Antonio Gibson out and with the matchup against the Cleveland Browns uh, at home in Washington, I think he's at the very least a safe play. And, you know, if he gets a few more targets or he gets in the end zone, gonna win you a ding dang championship. So, I like him a lot as a nice little sort of running back to play in week 17. And then finally, we got to the end of our running back list. We got Tyler Algier of the Atlanta Falcons. And this is sort of his backfield at this point. The Atlanta Falcons just love running the ball. It doesn't matter what the game script is, who the opponent is. They're going to run the ball. And you can see it yourself. He's been seeing a ton of volume. Last two weeks, 17 and 18 carries. Uh, he even saw five targets last week, so you'll love that. He's been the running back 7 and 12 with 22.1 and 13.7 points in half PPR the last couple weeks. So kind of like the last couple guys I mentioned, not a locked-in auto start type of guy, not like a McCaffrey, obviously, uh, but someone that you can use in a pinch. I like him as a nice, solid running back, too. It's a good matchup against the Arizona Cardinals at home in Atlanta. And I don't think this Cardinals offense can put up enough points where they'll be able to stop the Falcons from running the ball. But like I said already when I was talking about Tyler Algier, even if the Cardinals do get a lead, the Falcons are still going to run the ball. That's just what they do. 
So I think he's going to see 15 to 20 carries. Uh, maybe hopefully he gets a few targets and I think he is a he's got a nice safe floor uh, and if he gets in the end zone or he pops off a big run you're going to be super stoked you started him so uh, it's the end of the season you're probably not starting a lot of people that you drafted and if you have Tyler Algier on your squad you might want to think about starting him in week 17. All right now we're going to move on to the wide receiver position and in these videos I don't like to give you obvious starts you know I don't like to tell you to start Travis Kelsey or McCaffrey or guys like that I kind of like to pick out people that really stick out to me as someone that like maybe you're not thinking of as a starter or might exceed expectations maybe you know that player hasn't been great lately so Garrett Wilson Wide receiver of the New York Jets really stuck out to me as a wide receiver start of the week for Week 17 against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, not that the Seahawks necessarily have a bad defense or anything, but this is all about the quarterback change going on in New York. Mike White is going to be back under center uh, in Week 17. And for those who do not know, Garrett Wilson and just the offense in general have much, much more success with Mike White than they do with Zach Wilson. Um, Zach Wilson just, hey, Trevor Lawrence, what are you doing here? Uh, Zach Wilson just, just, hey, Rihanna, whoa, what's going on here? I don't know what's going on. Uh, what was I trying to say? Oh, yeah, Zach Wilson just stops the offense from moving, okay? Joe Flacco gets in there. Mike White gets in there. These offensive players are great. They can put up numbers. Um, obviously, week 13, since then, it's been rough, but I was at this game in Minnesota watching my Vikings get a great win. Mike White started that game. Oh, and, you know, he put up good games with Mike White. Zach Wilson takes over. He's been pretty bad. But now, Mike White's coming back. That's all this is about. Garrett Wilson is an elite talent. Uh, he's phenomenal. As long as there's a quarterback that can just get the ball in his hands. It's very simple. So, um, I I mean, I would start him with confidence in Week 17. Um, unless you've got, like, absolute studs that you just can't bench. I can't imagine a scenario where you're not at least trying your hardest to get Garrett Wilson in that lineup. And next up, I'm going to talk about Devontae Smith simply because he has really turned his season around. Obviously, you know, with A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard also for the Philadelphia Eagles on that offense, there's been times where it's kind of been hard for uh, Devontae Smith to get his targets, especially when you factor in Jalen Hurts who can run the ball himself and, not, you know, when he runs the ball, he's not throwing it. Uh, but last week, Gardner Minshew got the start, and he tied his season high in targets with 12 targets in a crazy game against the Dallas Cowboys. Finished with 8 for 113 and 2, 27.3 points and half PPR, the wide receiver 2 on the week. But even with Jalen Hurts, um, with Gardner Minshew, uh, just lately he's been great for fantasy, particularly since about week 13. So he's been hot. Um, and I feel like you kind of just have to stick with him at this point in week 17 against the New Orleans Saints. Um, I, I'm just kind of saying, hey, man, he's been hot. Maybe you have – it's kind of like James Conner where it was a, kind of a rough up-and-down start to the season. But I just wanted to bring him up because if you're not aware of what he's been doing lately, he's been awesome. And may, if you gave up on him, I would try to find a way to put him back in your lineup for week 17. And I think you'll be happy you did. All right, now we're going to move on to tight end. I'm going to bring up TJ Hawkinson. You're probably starting him already. Uh, but if you don't know just how good he's been with my Minnesota Vikings, um, obviously tight end is a gross position. And he's had some weeks where he hasn't been great for fantasy. But the targets, that's what you love. The targets have been there. I believe his first game with the Vikings was week nine against Washington. I believe he came in on a short week. Uh, didn't like take a week to learn the playbook or anything, like a game off. He just kind of stepped right in and saw nine targets, was nine for 70. Since then, I mean, he hasn't seen less than targets in the game. So at a position that, you know, it can be very gross at times. If you have TJ Hawkinson, he's basically, I'd say like a top three play against the Packers, a matchup thing that can be exploited. This is a very meaningful game. Packers need to win to keep their playoff hopes alive. The Vikings are trying to fight for that number one seed. Um, and I honestly, I think they kind of want to keep the Packers out of the playoffs. Uh, and last week in week 16, he saw 16 targets. That's insane for a tight end, especially for anybody. Caught 13 for 109 and two touchdowns. The number one tight end of the week, almost 30 points and half PPR. Obviously, I'm not expecting that, but there are not many tight ends that can even do that. You got like Kittle, Kelsey, 
uh, Mark Andrews when he's in his, you know, when the offense is clicking and he's with Lamar Jackson in his prime and all that, and their offense isn't dreadful. But, you know, it's a very limited list. So Hawkinson is a nice little start this week. And then we're going to move on to my final start of the week at tight end. It's going to be Evan Ingram of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're taking on the Houston Texans. The Texans have been pretty competitive lately, but honestly, that might be a good thing for fantasy purposes because earlier on in the year, Offenses just didn't have to do much against the Texans because the game would be over by halftime. Now with the Texans actually putting up a bit of a fight in some of these games, that kind of keeps the offense on the other side of the field maybe, you know, a little more aggressive having to actually do stuff, try to, you know, put up points. Evan Ingram, he's been hot lately. I mean, since week 13, 11, 33, 10, and almost 15 points. Been a top five tight end three times. He was a tight end one in week 14, so I don't know what happened after the bye week, but he is being heavily utilized, and he's doing a lot with his targets. So week 17, the Houston Texans are not enough to scare me off of starting him unless I have like a Hawkinson or a Kelsey, a guy like that. So Evan Ingram, it's crazy to say, but he might be winning people some championships, and we'll be talking about this for years to come. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I will talk to you guys later. Good luck in your championship games or your consolation brackets or maybe your third place uh, matchup so maybe you can get that entry feedback. And Happy New Year. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.